Ever look at your budget PC and think, yeah, there's no way this thing can run modern games smoothly? Well, what if I told you there's a way to boost your FPS up to 10 times without upgrading your GPU, CPU, or spending hundreds on new hardware? These days, most games practically force you to enable upscaling just to reach 60 frames per second. But paying a fortune for a new graphics card just to play a little smoother? Yeah, that doesn't sound worth it. Turns out, there's a better way. One of PC gaming's best-kept secrets, a tiny piece of software that costs just $6.99, works on almost any GPU, old or new, and delivers insane results. You've probably seen it somewhere on YouTube already. Lossless scaling. Lossless scaling. Lossless scaling. Lossless scaling. Lossless scaling? A tiny little software that every PC enthusiast is suddenly talking about. It claims to boost your FPS using AI upscaling and frame generation, kind of like DLSS or FSR, but here's the catch. You don't need a high-end GPU to use it. For today's setup, I'm running an X99 system with a Xeon E5 2667 V3. That's an 8-core, 16-thread CPU that cost me less than 10 bucks. Paired with 32 gigabytes of RAM and an RTX 2060 Super, it's not exactly a monster rig, but it's more than enough to see whether this $7 piece of software is truly as magical as people say. The game we're testing today is CS2, running at full HD resolution with high settings. It's one of the most popular and competitive titles on Steam, and the perfect way to test real-world performance. Now, if you're running a low-end PC, you usually have to pick one, graphics quality or high FPS. But the question is, can this $7 tool actually give my budget PC the best of both worlds? Or is it just another scam? I pressed Ctrl-Alt-S to launch the software, and for this test, I'm using LSFG version 3.1 in fixed mode, with the FPS multiplier set to 2. Just to make things clear, the number on the left represents the base FPS, while the number on the right shows the output FPS after frame generation, and yeah, it definitely feels smoother. The FPS now hovers around 200 to 230 frames per second, a huge improvement from before. I even tried watching closely for any input lag, but as you know, that's something almost impossible to catch with the naked eye. Overall, not bad at all. Next, I cranked it up to three times frame generation, and the FPS shot past 300 higher than what NVIDIA's own tech can usually achieve. To put that into perspective, I compared it with a $700 RTX 4070, and the results were shocking. The 2060 Super using a $7 piece of software delivered roughly the same 300 FPS. That's just 1% of the cost. But here's the catch. With this setting, input lag started to become noticeable. The visuals were smoother, sure, but in games that demand quick reactions, it started to feel just a bit off. Next, I wanted to test the difference between fixed frame generation and adaptive frame generation. So fixed basically acts like a multiplier, similar to how Nvidia's version works. It just duplicates frames at a constant rate. But adaptive mode is a bit smarter. It adds in extra frames dynamically between existing ones to hit your target FPS. Think of it like a variable math equation instead of a fixed multiplier. So instead of using the static option, I'm going with adaptive, and I'll set my target to 350 frames per second, which is probably overkill for these settings. But realistically, I'm aiming for a stable 300 frames per second gameplay experience. The results were pretty much what I was hoping for. The FPS hit my target, and the visuals looked incredibly smooth. Way less stutter than before. However, the input latency still isn't quite on par with a native render. There's one more thing I haven't mentioned yet. Something called Flow Scale. It's a slider that controls how lossless scaling processes each frame. When you lower the flow scale, the software shrinks the image before upscaling it again, which gives you higher FPS, but the picture becomes a bit softer. When you raise the flow scale, the image looks sharper and more detailed, but performance drops slightly since the GPU has to process more pixels. In most cases, the sweet spot is around 50 to 60%. A nice balance between clarity and performance. Basically, lossless scaling works like an AI frame interpolation tool. It analyzes the previous frame to predict what the next one should look like. It doesn't rely on the game engine or need tensor cores, which means it can even run on mid-range GPUs like the RTX 2060 Super. 
The downside is that the AI sometimes guesses wrong, causing motion ghosting or distorted HUD elements in fast-moving scenes. Here's a really cool feature. Lossless scaling actually lets you use a secondary GPU just for frame generation. That means your main GPU focuses entirely on running the game, while the secondary one handles all the extra frames. This is the GTX 1063GB, a legend that ruled the gaming scene almost a decade ago. Now it's been forgotten, but I don't want its story to end here. Right beside it sits the RTX 2060 Super, newer, stronger, and way more capable. And today I'm bringing these two generations together, not in SLI, not with any fancy tricks. Just a crazy idea. Another thing we need to do is remove the main GPU and have the display run through the secondary GPU instead. In this setup, the secondary card handles the display output, while the main GPU still does all the heavy lifting for the actual gameplay. It's just routed through the secondary card. Can a nearly 10-year-old GPU actually help a modern one push beyond its limits? Let's find out. Before testing, we need to tweak a few settings. First, head into the NVIDIA control panel, go to the third option, and select which GPU you want to handle most of the workload. In my case, that's the RTX 2060 Super. Then, open the lossless scaling app and set the preferred GPU to the GTX 1063 GB. So, what kind of FPS do we get? With 2x frame generation, the numbers hover around 180 to 200 FPS, sometimes even lower than before the boost. However, the graphics look noticeably cleaner, and the input lag feels almost non-existent. It's nearly as smooth as native rendering. Now, when I pushed it to 10 times frame generation, the FPS skyrocketed, hitting the 500 FPS limit of my monitor. In reality, it's producing far more frames than the screen can show, and the gameplay feels incredibly fluid. But there's a catch. You start seeing motion blur during fast movements, and input lag becomes more noticeable. And just for fun, I cranked it all the way up to 20 times frame generation. At that point, the image looked like it was melting my eyes. Everything turned into a blurry, dreamlike mess, almost like gaming after a few too many drinks. Next, I switched over to GTA 5, running at 2K resolution, and brought back the $7 trick. Using fixed mode with 2x frame generation, the base FPS was around 40, but after enabling the feature, it nearly doubled. For a game that doesn't demand lightning-fast reactions, that's actually pretty solid, smooth enough to enjoy, while still appreciating all the visuals this classic title has to offer. Then I decided to push it a bit further with 5x frame generation. This time, FPS reached around 180 frames per second. From my experience though, there was some input lag, and the image started to look slightly blurry, especially during quick camera movements, enough to make me a bit dizzy after playing for a while. So, honestly, 2x feels like the sweet spot here. But of course, I had to try 10 times frame generation just to see what would happen. And just as I expected, FPS skyrocketed, hitting around 350 frames per second. It looked incredibly smooth at first glance, but the same issue appeared again. Heavy image artifacts and distortion, mostly around the edges of the screen, making the visuals look a bit unreal. So after all the tests, here's my honest takeaway. Lossless scaling works best for offline or single-player games, where you just want smooth, cinematic gameplay and don't need lightning-fast reactions. But in competitive titles like CS2 or Apex Legends, the input lag is still a deal-breaker. In short, this isn't some miracle that turns your old GPU into a flagship. It's a clever way to squeeze every last drop of power out of the hardware you already own. And for just 7 bucks, it's genuinely impressive especially if you're using an older GPU or gaming at higher resolutions. It's not perfect, but it's absolutely a tool worth trying. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. And if you love budget GPUs and want a chance to get one for free, click on the video that's popping up on screen right now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.